research is pretty clear nowadays in regards to our understanding of addiction and the role that it has with the brain, that it truly is a disease of the brain. We typically look at three aspects. Uh, is there a loss of control? Is the behavior compulsive? And then probably the most important, do I continue to do it despite the negative consequences? Do I still engage in the behavior knowing that I can lose my job, lose my marriage, go to jail, and I do it anyway? That's really the uh, prime definition. It's as common as being left-handed. It's about 10% of the population. So, um, you know, we, we probably know several people in our lives who are left-handed, and that's probably the same number of folks, or even more so, that probably have an addiction. So it is something that's pretty wide, um, widespread in our society. And then when we add things such as the internet and those behavioral addictions like gambling, gaming, and pornography, it opens up that realm of addiction. It's not only just drugs and alcohol, but now these behaviors. Well, when we look at addiction, young people are many times very vulnerable to that. Their brain is still developing. So when they use substances, it has a different impact on their brain at that time. Uh, that, that part of our brain that tells us to slow down or stop or don't do that is not really fully developed. And when we have a substance that's involved in that, it really starts to interfere with that braking system. So young people become pretty vulnerable to this. Some people may have issues that run in their family. Their, their DNA might be contributing to their addiction. Uh, we know that makes people more susceptible to alcohol, to drugs, even to mental health issues as depression and anxiety. We know some people have unresolved issues in their life, such as trauma, grief, abuse, and whenever those things bubble up, I want to suppress them. I don't want to feel those things or, or think about those things. So I use the substance to help me do that. Some people have distorted thinking that uh, justifies their drinking. Maybe this is the only way I can have a good time, the only way I can relax, and those distortions in my thoughts perpetuate this addiction cycle. Some people will use it as a mere means of just coping. When I feel stress or anxiety or depressed, I use whatever I can to help me cope with that. It takes that away. And then finally, we see some people who just have that addictive piece of the brain where my behavior now has really impacted that reward system of my brain and my brain really becomes addicted to that behavior or, or to that substance. So as a treatment provider, we try to understand what is that combination that might be going on for that particular individual and then design a treatment plan to help them with that. Well, when folks first have issues with addiction, we want to really determine uh, if they need a level of care that's going to help them uh, basically detoxify from the substance. Initially, for people that have addiction, especially with drugs or alcohol, we want to go through this period of them detoxifying from the drug and really starting to stabilize them. And then at that point, uh, a person's then more open to looking at what are some of the treatment strategies to address the level of care that they need. Some people can benefit from outpatient, other people need inpatient, some people need residential. So depending on the level of care will kind of dictate what they need to really deal with this issue.